Hello everyone and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivorian Spice and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 27. Yes, another week we are back at it again guys. It's been good for us Manchester United fans. You know, it's been a good week so far with a win against Burnley and also a draw against Liverpool. Manchester United is still top of the table, two points clear off of Leicester, three points clear off of the Scouts of Scumbags. So yes, good week for us. And of course, today, guys, we have a special guest. We have up and coming artist takes. What are you say, my G? Good, bro. Good, bro. What up? And of course, we have the usual guest, my brother Jex. What are you saying, bro? I'm good as usual, bro. Good week of football. We didn't lose, so I'm, I'm blessed. Cool. And of course, Amok should be joining us, guys. He's running a bit late, but he'll be with us sooner or later. And of course, guys, if you are new to the channel, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and remember to share, because sharing that Roaring Spice is caring. You don't know. Of course, this week, we'll be talking about the match against Liverpool, the nil-nil scoreless draw. We will look into the game as well and di dissect the game, because of course, there's a few things that I would like to talk about. Players like Bruno, Rashford, Pogba playing on the right, Luke Shaw as well, his performance. And we'll talk about the weekend roundup, the Premier League roundup, your game, guys, your game of the week. And then we'll just talk about the preview against Fulham, which will be happening on Wednesday. And of course, last but not least, another Northwest derby, which is Liverpool at Old Trafford this weekend in the FA Cup. And of course, we have Amok just joining us. What are you saying, bro? Yeah, nothing, man. Sorry, guys, for the late. I had quick errands I had to run from last so um, man saying now that yeah. man's feeling good. Yeah, feeling good. Yeah, that's all good, bro. Anyway, let's go straight into the show, guys. <clears throat> Liverpool nil, Manchester United nil. Scoreless draw. Manchester United still on top of the Premier League, two points clear, like I said earlier on, off of Leicester, three points clear off of Liverpool. Liverpool can now smell our farts. It, it can. It really stinks now. Another week where Liverpool gets to smell our farts. Because why? You're behind us, fam. So you're behind us. We drew against Liverpool. Some of you will say that it was a good, good result. I thought it was a good result to draw. But of course, last week when I was talking, I wanted us to win, go there, own the pitch, own the match, but we failed to do that. We gave the ball away. We bent over for Liverpool at times. But in the second half, we did do well. I'm pleased with that. Some other fans thought that we should have won. I don't blame them. Some fans were upset about Bayi not starting. I also don't blame them. But at the end of the day, Lindelof done well. Luke Shaw as well, he done well as well. A couple of players like Bruno Fernandes, Rashford, Pogba's been playing on the right we'll talk about that Luke Shaw who done tremendously well apart from that I've got nothing much to say I'm pleased that we are two points clear still top of the table enough for week for us you know to make the you know the let's say the dream more of a reality but right now I'm still dreaming let's all dream that we might win the league but we're still living in reality at the end of the day takes bro what are you saying oh. man how did you feel about that match um, I feel we've done all right, you know. I feel, but I still feel like we missed an opportunity to get the three points. I'm not gonna lie, with that defense that they had, and we had the two best chances of the game as well. Obviously, we've done a low block defending, but I feel like when you go to Anfield in this day and age, that's how you have to play and hope you take your chances. And we didn't take our chances, so I feel like we, um, that was a missed opportunity. I can't lie. No lie about it, man. It was definitely a missed opportunity where we could have been six points clear. Five, would have been five points clear off of Leicester. Jess, man, how do you feel about that match? You know what? I agree with takes, you know. <clears throat> I feel like the boys were a bit nervous, especially in the last 20 minutes. Liverpool were opening up and the normal United will pick out passes and pick out the team. But for some mm. reason, man, them were just moving a little bit nervous. I'm not too sure why. They gave Liverpool a bit too much respect, in my opinion. Yeah. Guys, um, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Do you not think like we played, we, we played against the reputation, not the actual team that they put on the pitch? Thank we, you. That's what thank I feel like, that's what we did. Because they're did. not in form. They haven't scored in two yeah. matches. So yeah. it's a case of, I understand why 
both Scott and Fred played. Our back five, including De Gea, were amazing. They played very well. But, like you're saying, Liverpool are not in form. It was an opportunity to go out and take them out, you know. But I feel like it was a little bit too defensive, a little bit too apprehensive. Um, Fernandez had a poor game for me. He lost the ball a lot. I don't know what is going on with his boots. I think he needs some new boots because he lost the ball a lot yesterday. I want to say one thing. Bruno Fernandes in the big game has not turned up. The only game he's turned up against was just against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. But so far in the big games, he hasn't turned up for us. He's let us down. He, he let us down a little bit yesterday. But do you know what, for me, he gets a blight because he's our number one player. He gets a blight and just hope that he can, he can improve the accuracy of those long passes because... He's allowed to take risky passes because he's a creative player. He assists a lot, but it needs to be a bit more accurate. He's letting the ball go away a little bit too much. Um, but all in all, I'm happy with the draw because Liverpool were dead in the first half. Mm-hmm. They, sh- they should have scored two or three. Firmino could have scored two in the first half. So I think a deserve is a, a, a draw is a deserved result. I'm happy with it. And Amuk, what are you saying, man? How do you feel about that match? Boy, it was a tense match like before every match played. Like I said, when it's Liverpool, Manchester play different. The mentality is different. You even saw um um what's it called? Finding that um sending out like a very good message to the club itself. So like I said last week, when it's Liverpool it sound different. But the that the fact that we got a drill there, that's for me, that's better than nothing. Like they it's for me it's, first off was kinda of Liverpool's half and second off was like kind of Manchester. You know what I mean? So it was like, I mean, it's 50 50. But Liverpool, like you guys just said, it, oh, it's the reputation. Liverpool last season, the season before, teams are scared. I think we went, uh, went to our field, scared a little bit. We could have taken them two chances. Them two chances were the best chances of the match. And, but kudos to the guys, though. Like, draw less, as the goal less uh, draw, why not take that, that hand field? Teams get packed in by Liverpool. Now take that. I think the guys did okay. Not excellent. But they did okay. And with Bruno Fernandes, speaking of Bruno Fernandes, his performance in, in general, it, it wasn't the best. He did let us down. And so far, I think this is like the second game in a row that I personally feel like Bruno Fernandes hasn't been at his best. Especially in the big games. Especially against Man City as well. That, especially in that, in that game. That game against Liverpool where he could have open up the team with a fair decisive chance and passes. At times, he gave the ball away cheaply as well. I know he's trying to make things happen. I know the type of player he is. He has to take risky pass. But in a big game like this, sometimes I say simplify your game and make sure you pay, play the right passes at the right time. Don't just do it, you know, because you have to see those players running. But it, he had a poor game. He was my donkey of the match. And especially his behaviour as well towards getting subbed off. I, I didn't like that, you know? Yeah, I didn't like that either, you know? That was I, not I don't know who he thinks he is to just behave like that just because he didn't want to come off. Last time he got subbed off, Plus. he was doing the same thing. Man, don't feel Plus. that. And what you mean? Like Sharon, the well, that's, he runs the dressing room, man. man yeah, Sharon, yeah, you can tell, though. Like one minute left, one yeah, minute left. Why are you, you taking me off? <laughs> he runs that dressing room. Yeah, bro, For bro. me, even but, though he's our best player, bro, there's levels to this. No one's above the badge you have to show respect mm. even if you don't agree with the manager you need to walk off and then in the dressing room you do all of that yeah. don't bring true, like, Manchester true. United into the news for negative reasons man true 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 okay. that well said and you know who I feel sorry for because right now I think his hands are still left in the air as we speak right now sitting down in Old Trafford that's Alex Tellers Alex Tellers was trying to get a spud my man aired him <laughs> you didn't see that you didn't see that no, that's how I pissed off Bruno that. was Bruno, Bruno. Wait, wasn't it Greenwood? Wasn't it um, Greenwood that come No, out he slapped his hand. Okay. He slapped his hand. And then when he came off, yeah, went up the stairs, on, on, up those stairs, you see tellers like this. My man, uh, I didn't even around. see that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you see with Bruno, though, I, I, yeah. I don't like it, but I love it at the same time. He's so, so much passion. Like, he's mm-hmm. just a born winner, bro. Like, he's a born winner. Nil, nil at Anfield, and he's pissed because he's coming off in the last couple of minutes. No, like, I read that. Know, that's what we need. Like, he remind me of Ronaldo, though. Yeah, like, you saw Ronaldo, Ronaldo would back have done in the, the same days. Thing. The same mentality that like, these lot, they like you said, the passion. They play with passion. Yeah. If you playing a, if you playing among them, you are not doing the same work they putting in. Well, you are getting it. You saw what he told. You know, he told the Lendelof, told of Maguire. 
na he's selling a thief on the pitch. You know what I mean? Like, that's what we need, though. Like, we need the passion. We need, the, like, the aggression. Yeah. Like, it's not too much not love. Like you, know? you can't show too much love. You can't show too much love. But yeah, yeah. We need the aggression. Marcus Rashford as well. His performance. <laughs> that opportunity of that counter-attack. What a joker. Ran into traffic again. Like, I don't understand. Like, this is counter-attack and football that we do best, yeah? And we're not the best at it when we play counter-attack and football because the decisions that we make when we're on a break, most, like, six or six, seven out of ten, out of ten times, it's not right. You know that for sure. Our counter-attack's not the best, but we're known for counter-attack and football. But Rashford running into that bunch of crowd thinking, where are you going, man? The pass is right there. Cavani's there. Cavani's there. In, in to, the, to the extent that Pogba was there. Yeah. Hmm? He had a poor game as well. He should have came off. Marshall should have never come off. Rashford should have come off. But my man Oli as well, favoritizing the, what's it called, Sir Marcus Rashford, you know, the guy that's what's feeding the kids in the UK right now. I, I don't get it. Now, how do you guys feel? Because I didn't think Marcus Rashford had a good game. He was poor. Yeah, he didn't have a great game, you know. Um, I, I recall the opportunity you're talking about. He could have slotted in Cavani on the left. I feel he should have put him in, but at the same time, I have to give credit to Fabinho because for an older gentleman, Fabinho kept up with Rashford and then blocked the ball. Um, but Jax, the, the pass was there. Wasn't great. The pass know, was there. The pass was already there. The through ball was ready for there for Cavani, but my man continued to run. So that's on him. That was stupid. <laughs> But then if he licks the ball past Fabinho now and smashes it in, it's a good goal. You know, he's a forward. He would have never done that because I know Mark Rashford. By the time he got there, CPU crashes down before he's about to shoot and he just just shoots the ball. Man knows. He he didn't have a great game, but he didn't have many opportunities to be fair to him, man. I remember we said it's all about individuality. The players don't play with like tactics or better, better tactics and that, no? We yeah. see in, individual players doing what they got to do. Like what you lot mentioned about Rashford, if it was a team game, do you think he was going to do what he did? Nah, he was going to pass the ball because he already got told when you play whatever permission, passing is what mm-hmm. makes you score goals. So why do you t- think he done that? Because they believe in themselves so much that they can do anything at any given time, which I love about these players. And that's what we've all seen this season. That's why we're seeing number one, not because of the, the what we've got, it's because of the passion, like what these players are capable of doing. That's what we've seen. So yeah, for me, I blame Rashford. Like I blame Rashford a bit, a little bit, but I can't really blame him too tough. Because that's what they do. Like you said, it, Jake, if he did pass my man, that was a banger. Like, come on. And Tix, what do you think about this? What do you think about Marcus Rashford? Rashford. You know, Rashford, he can, he can, he can, he can do something mad at any time. He can have a shit game and do something mad at any time. But yeah, he's not on form for me, man. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because his head's out thinking mm-hmm. about feeding the kids, which is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. But he needs to, he needs to bring the form with it as well, man. Of course, guys, we had Pogba playing on the right, which I thought, Oli, what was you doing playing Paul Pogba on the right? But of course, Paul Pogba had to play somehow. But it was just a bit weird. He had defensive capabilities that he had to do. That's what Oli said. Yeah, I mean, the reason why he played him on the right is because he had defensive responsibilities to do. It's shocking. Shocking. But I understand. Tays, what do you think about the Pogba playing on the right? I didn't like it, to be honest. I didn't like it. I would have preferred Pogba coming off the left, but I do understand it at the same time because he was playing the low block and obviously we had two ball-winning midfielders in McTominay and Fred. So going to Anfield, you have to play with the low block and try and play on the counter. So I understood, but personally, I didn't like it. And what about you, Jakes? Pogba playing on the right. How did you feel about that? I agree with you, Takes. I didn't like it myself, but I understand why he did it. I feel like, as you say, away from home, he will always play squad with Fred if they're fit. And Pogba's been on form. He, A, he wants to put him into the team and fit him in somewhere. B, he wants to try and retain a little bit more of the ball. And Daniel James would lose the ball more often than Paul Pogba on the right. So I think that was his thinking. But it's just evident. We need a right winger. It's been seven years, you know? We just need a right winger or two. No, what are you, Amuk? For me, it was a wrong take. I hope it never happens again. Because <laughs> I'm just saying, isn't it? Again. Hope it never happens again. Because we need to see the best out of Pogba. Like, we need to see his creative side more of his physical side so 
Oli better do something about that. Like we, it's been seven years, we ain't got like number seven. Hopefully, like this January, we can do something, or maybe in the summer. But never want to see Pogba play that wing. Never want to see him play that wing no more. It, for me, it was just hectic for him as a player, and obviously helped the team defensively. But it shouldn't happen again. Cool. And of course, guys, we got to move it straight up to our Premier League roundup, which is game of the week. Of course, I my game of the week was Tottenham versus Sheffield United. Endo Bele ready to tango. Endo Bele did his thing as always. Of course, I was pleased with that. I ain't gonna lie. What about you, takes? Um, my game of the week was Man City versus Crystal Palace. For the reason of reason of or for <laughs> got a little bit in English and GCSE and that, but anyway, yeah, Man City, mm -hmm. they're just doing their thing quietly with class, and that's the team that I'm scared of in terms of this title race. It's them, forget the rest of them, it's Liverpool and Man City, but more Man City car, they're doing it with class, even though COVID hit their squad, they're still there, still coming with a game in hand. It's peak. And what about you, Jigs? Um, yes, my game of the week um, was definitely the Wolves-West Brom game. A lot of goals, 3-2. It was funny that I mentioned Big Sam just two weeks ago. He was calling for a two-week COVID break for the players. Mm -hmm. Look at him now. He's got three points in his pocket. So I'm sure he won't be calling that for that anytime soon. But um, yeah, that was my game of the week. And what about you, Mook? Like Jack said it all. It, the, um, was it called Wolves game? For me, it was one of the best games this weekend. And just to see what West Brown did, because they haven't won God knows since when. And to see what they did, it's brilliant. And Big Sam, obviously, is under pressure, but I believe this weekend must have been one of his best weekends since he took that job. And we move it on straight from the Premier League game of the week, going into that match preview against Fulham. Manchester United playing Fulham on Wednesday, guys. Another chance for us to go. Three points clear, or whoever we are. Hopefully, hopefully we can do that. I'm also hoping that Manchester United can stay top of the table. So that gives us a chance for us to remain top of the table for another week, which would be fantastic and great. Against Fulham, going down at Craven Cottage should be an easy win for us. It's a team where everyone's getting their three points real quick and real easy. So I don't see a, I don't see Manchester United struggling. But then again, low block team. We'll see how good our midfield is. What about you, Tate? What do you think about that game? I feel I feel like it's going to be a tough game, you know. Because mm -hmm. I reckon Fulham are going to have a low block. They haven't lost in four, I believe. Mm -hmm. They four draws. So they're going to try and nick something. So I feel like we shouldn't we shouldn't even try and have two defensive midfielders. Have Pogba in the centre. Have two wingers. Play Cavani up front. And let's get that three points and stay on top of the table, bro. Uh, I'm not trying to see anything else. And you, Jakes? Well said, takes. You took it all out of my mouth, man. Like, literally, <laughs> we just need that three points. Fulham have drawn the last four, but I don't really care about that. I just need to, I just need three points. That's all we need. And what about you, Amuk? Like, three point. Hopefully, you can outshine them with quality. Or definite three point. It ain't going to be an easy match because they're picking up form. And TMC is picking up form. You've got to be scared of them. This is the Premier League. It's one of the most difficult leagues. So hopefully we go there and get the three point. Definitely. So all we need is that three points. Keep things going, you know, to make this dream, whatever this dream is, more of a reality, guys. You know, <laughs> we move us straight to Liverpool versus Manchester United again. Playing at Old Trafford. Another game against those dirty scousers, you know. I I'm tired of seeing them right now, you know. Mo Salah's still trying to find his way out of Luke Shaw's pocket. Do you think <laughs> he's got another... Do you think he really wants this from Luke Shaw? I definitely think that we should win because if we play a weakened team and if Liverpool play their weakened team, we should win. We're out of Trafford. It's the mm. FA Cup. Anything can happen. Knockout stages now. I don't, I don't have a doubt, any doubt that Manchester United will probably lose. Definitely we should win. Even though it's Liverpool and it can go anyhow, I still feel that we should win. What about you, Amo? No, definitely we need to win because we've played twice in this season and we've got two draws and the way the team is looking, 
like go there and win. Liverpool ain't no threat. They're still a good team, very, very good team. But we've all seen the past few weeks how this league can change. And what we what happened yesterday, seeing Manchester play the way they did play, I believe we can go we can play them again and definitely get a free point from them. So and, hopefully we get the free point. And what are you saying, Jex? Um <clears throat> I'm 50 50 with this game. It's an FA Cup game. The home advantage is not really an advantage without the fans. So it's good that we're playing at Old Trafford, but we haven't got the fans behind us. Um, I would like us to win that game, of course, as a United fan. Mm -hmm. But it's just down to the fact that against Liverpool yesterday, we didn't put pressure on Fabinho and Henderson, two players that are not natural centre backs. In the FA Cup on the weekend, we have to do that. If we want to score goals, Let's put them under pressure and see what they're really about. See how how good they can be without Van Dijk. And we'll see from there. Fingers crossed for the win. Hope so too, man. Taste, man. What about you? What are you thinking? We're going to deal with them. Is it? <laughs> That's a Greenwood hat trick. We're going to deal with them. Nah, it takes not, I like your not, optimism, you know. No, we're not That's me. Nothing. It's a cup game. It's a mm -hmm. cup game. We're not shook enough. We're not trying mm -hmm. to stay on top or trying to grab a point. It's a cup game. One game, bro. Let's go for it. Mason Greenwood on the right hat trick. There we go. Go for the kill. <laughs> nice. Go for the kill. Yeah, yeah, trust. We should definitely go for the kill. Definitely go for the kill against those scousers, bro. They deserve to lose against us, man. It would be nice to get one up against them. Because I remember, I, I, I think our last game against them in the cup match probably was Europa League. I don't know what FA Cup. We didn't, we didn't knock them out, innit? Nah, I don't think ah. so. So we I definitely need to get one over them, you know. Just to make them remember that you know who we are. We're Manchester United, remember? <laughs> Don't forget that. You're still number 19 and we're still 20, trying to get 21 in 2021. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully, guys. But yeah, guys, we have come straight to the end of the show. It's been a good show for us. It's been a good week for Manchester United. All you main night, Holics, you know, just sink it in, talk in, you know. Enjoy, enjoy this for now, you know. You know, keep dreaming, guys. Hey guys, we're gonna give up to the guys so they can give out their shout outs where you can find them. Takes, let the band them and the girl them know exactly where they can find you and what you've got coming for them as well. Yeah, Instagram, long live takes with a Z at the end. New music video out on GRM Daily called No Games. Some more music to come. But yeah, follow me on Instagram, long live takes. And then what about you? Where can they find you? Now, Instagram, pretty flacco underscore 16. All day. What about you, Jex? Uh, <clears throat> Instagram, Jex underscore United. <laughs> That's going to make me laugh. <laughs> guys, <laughs> Don't edit that, though. <laughs> of course, you can find <laughs> me on Instagram, which is Ivorian underscore Spice. And of course, remember to follow the official Instagram account, which is Red United TV One, baby. And remember to subscribe, smash that like button. Remember to share if we're in spice as usual. Girls, as usual, send out your man them that you don't like the, my link so he can be like, what's that? A man that can do it way better than you guys. Trust me. Guys, as always, remember to keep it united and remember to keep it red united. We'll see you next week. We out.